I want to share with you today one of the simplest yet most powerful tools I've ever come across. And I say simplest and most powerful because there's a huge differential between the amount of effort you have to put in and the gain, what you get out of it on the other side. In other words, it's a tiny little bit of effort produces a very, very large uh, gain. Now, it's based around this. You've probably heard or come across the power pose, you know, where you stand like Wonder Woman or, or Superman, and it impacts how you feel. It makes you feel more confident. You have more energy. It fiddles around with your body chemistry as well. But the real power in this isn't just the power pose. It's if you understand what's really going on, how your brain and your body are talking to each other. If you understand that, which I'm going to share, explain in a minute, then you can apply that understanding in a range of different ways to, to give yourself not, not just an energy boost, but help you to manage stress, to change your energy, your state at, at, any, actually at any time. So here's what's actually happening. Here's how it works. There is a constant synchronization between how you feel on the inside and how that appears on the outside. Here, here's what I mean. If you're feeling happy on the inside, what happens on the outside? Well, you smile, don't you? Now, you don't remember to smile. It's an, it happens automatically. And the reason for that is the emotional circuitry of the brain is connected to your facial muscles and also to, to your body as well. Similarly, if you feel stressed on the inside, what happens on the outside? Well, you tense, don't you? And you frown. And again, it's because the emotional circuitry of the brain is connected to your facial muscles and your body muscles, which is why you tense and, you know, tense your jaw, your neck and, and your shoulders. But here's the thing. It's a synchronization. It's bi the, the word often used is bi-directional. And what bi-directional means is it goes in both directions. So, so not only is it true that you smile on the outside, when you feel happy on the inside, but what you do on the outside affects how you feel on the inside. So it goes both ways. In other words, it, not only is it true that you smile because you feel happy, but smiling can make you feel happy. Similarly, frowning and tensing on the outside can make you feel stressed on the inside because what you're doing on the outside is feeding back into the brain because the synchronization is between how you feel on the outs in the in, on the inside and what your muscles are doing on the outside. So they're so the brain and the body are constantly talking to each other. And if this talks, then that hears it. But if this talks, then that hears it. So how you feel on the inside, if the brain is talking, it affects your muscles on the outside. But if the muscles do the talking on the outside, it affects the brain and how you feel on on the inside. And there's a couple, here, here's a couple of examples you've probably noticed actually. Uh, when you, have you ever noticed that when you feel tired, let's say you're sitting at your desk, you feel tired and you slouch. Now that's because how you feel on the inside is affecting what you're doing on the outside. But what's also true, and you might not have realised, is slouching itself can make you feel tired because bi-directional, they're in synchronization. Similarly, when you're feeling quite bright and, and energized, you tend to walk with a spring in your step. But in the, same, in the same way, walking with a spring in your step on purpose can make you feel more energized and sprightly. Similarly, as I said already, you smile when you feel happy, but smiling on purpose can make you feel happy. Now, here's a, a wee bit of, of science that, that actually looked at this. Researchers at the University of Alaska actually got volunteers to look at photographs of people smiling or frowning and ask them to mimic what they see in the photographs. So those who mimicked, who copied, in other words, the smile, the photograph of the smile, within seconds, they actually felt more positive. Those who mimicked the frown within seconds started to feel less positive. Isn't that absolutely amazing? One of my favourite pieces of research in this field was done in New Zealand when researchers got volunteers to sit upright or they left them to slouch in, a, in an office for 20 minutes. Now, to make them sit up straight, they actually taped them to the chair. Believe it or not, they used that KT kinesiology tape and they literally taped them to the chair so that they sat upright for 20 minutes. So one group sat upright for 20 minutes, one group slouched 
for 20 minutes. And then when they did lots of tests afterwards, it turned out that those who'd sat up right felt more, they had more energy, they felt more positive, they felt more confident. And another thing that the researchers did is they sprung on them at the last minute what's called a social, a social stress test. And a typical example of that is with almost no preparation, they say you've got to give a presentation. Now, who doesn't feel stressed at that thought of having to give a presentation when you've literally got five minutes to prepare? So it's called a social stress test. Well, those who'd sat up right gave better, they were judged by a panel to have given better and more confident presentations than those who'd sat slouched at their desk. Isn't that absolutely incredible? And the only difference, the only difference was how they sat, whether upright or slouched. And that made a difference to how they felt and also how they presented themselves in a, a presentation. Now, so how do we use this? How can we tap into this, this idea that there's this synchronization? Well, what about when you're, have you ever noticed if you're feeling stressed, then you're, you tend to move in more a more jerky fashion. You move faster, you move your body in a more jerky fashion, you knock objects over, you also, you shallow breathe, you speak a lot faster. So, if how you feel is causing you to do that on the outside, what do you think you would do then to de-stress to make yourself feel relaxed? Well, act as if you would, act as if you were mimicking someone who was nice and relaxed. When you're feeling relaxed, what do you do with your body? Well, you do the exact opposite of what you do when you're stressed. If you're feeling relaxed or if you're watching someone who's totally chilled and relaxed, what do you notice? Well, they're not moving their body in fast jerky movements. It's slow, fluid movements. Instead of shallow breathing, it's relaxed breathing. The head tends to be up rather than down and moving around really fast. So if you want to de-stress, of course, you can think positive thoughts or you can have a wee seat, which, of course, these kind of things work. But one of the fastest ways to achieve a sense of calm is just to simply say, what would my body be doing if I'm feeling calm? And then go do that. And because there's this synchronization, the body and the brain are talking to each other all the time. What the, when you start, if you start moving around slowly, if, if normally when you're feeling stressed, you're moving really fast, then purposely, on purpose, move slowly, but move your body in a more slow, fluid fashion. Slow your speech right down. Start to enunciate what you're saying on purpose. All of the things you would do if you're feeling relaxed and alert, even, and, and, and breathe on purpose and do all of these things. What your body is saying is, I'm chilled, I'm relaxed, I have everything under control. Your brain hears that and says, okay then. And your brain then adjusts your internal state, how you feel and the biochemistry inside your body to reflect that. What about this other example? Let's suppose you're feeling a bit tired and you want to be more alert and energised. Well, if you're feeling, what, what do you do? The opposite of what you're currently doing because if you're currently feeling a bit tired and low in energy, then you'll probably find that you're slouching, your spine will be a bit floppy, which means it's, you find it difficult to sit up straight so you kind of flop around. Maybe your face will be a bit tired, maybe even you'll be frowning, you might be shallow breathing again. All of these things that, that show on the outside that this is how you're feeling on the inside. On the inside. So what do you do? You want to flip it around. You want to say, what would my body be doing if I'm feeling energised? Well, <clears throat> straighten your spine. A simple little way to, a trick to think about is, imagine you've got a bicycle pump, but you're pumping up not a bicycle tyre, but you're pumping up your spine and just lengthen and stretch and straighten your spine. Drop your shoulders, put your head up and breathe on purpose. And then if you're moving, Try to lift yourself, move with a sprightly step, maybe uh, you know, swing your arms a little bit more and lift yourself, move with a bit of a sprightly step and really, really quickly what you'll find is you'll start to feel more energised. Now scientists actually tested this. They compared two groups of people, they randomised 110 people into two groups and half of them were asked for two minutes to walk in a slouched, tired fashion. And amazingly, within the two minutes, they actually felt tired and less energised. 
The other group, they ask them to do something like skipping, but you don't have to do a full on skip. They ask them just to swing their shoulders and walk with a sprightly thing, but if they want, you can have a wee, do a wee kind of skip kind of thing. And within two minutes, they were completely energized. The difference in energy levels between the two groups was huge. And all they did differently was one group slouched and walked in a tired fashion, one group walked with a spring in their step with a, a little bit of a, a kind of skip. So how does this work again? Remember I said right at the start, if you understand how it works, you can apply it in all these different ways. By what we've done so far, we've, we've come to understand now that the reason why the power pose and similar things work is because the brain and the body are always talking to each other in a bi-directional manner. In other words, they're synchronised. How you feel on the inside affects what you how you present on the outside, but it goes the other way. What you do with your body, i.e. on the outside, affects how you feel on the inside. So here's a couple of wee experiments to try to show yourself just how powerful this is. Do a wee comparison test. For a minute or two, either sit or stand or move your body in a tired, slouched fashion and notice how you feel. And then abruptly change it into an upright, energised stance, or if you're moving, energised movement, and just notice the difference in how you feel and how quickly that transition occurs as you change your body language from slouched and tired to upright and sprightly. Another little experiment to try is um, try the sprightly walk. So you, you can skip if you like, Depends how self-conscious you are. If you're in a place, then people can see you. Then maybe you can try more of a kind of, you know, spring in your step walk. But if you want to do a full-on skip, you know, it's amazing how it will actually. And notice how it makes you feel. And then, then realize that you changed how you felt simply by changing how you moved, how you moved or held your body. The third one uh, to try is, is about ingraining this as a habit. Set a wee alarm or a timer on your watch for a couple, two, three, four, or as many as you like, different random times throughout the day. And each time you you hear your alarm or you feel the vibration, if it's on your phone or your watch or whatever, notice what your posture is like. In other words, notice how you're moving or holding your body in that moment and then change it. Flip it if you have to, if you're doing, doing a kind of tired posture or a stressed posture, just flip it around and move your body into a way that says, I've got this. I'm feeling good on the inside. I feel worthy. I value myself. Whatever that you, whatever you want to feel, just use your body. Put your body into the state that you would have as a state if you felt that way. So say, how would I like to feel? Move your body in such a way to create that, that state. And, and so as I say, do it as a little alarm, set a little timer on your watch. And what you're doing here is you're ingraining a habit. And the more often you do this, the more frequently you do this, the more you ingrain that habit until your, your natural posture or your natural way of moving is actually something that's brighter, lighter, brighter, a more energized or whatever way you want it actually to be. So that last little experiment is about ingraining a habit. So give it a go and see how you go on.